Hello and welcome back to AS Level Psychology. Today we'll be moving on in section 2 and following on from looking at the multi-store memory model, we will be checking out the working memory model. So what is the working memory model? It's basically a model that shows how memory is held temporarily and how it's held in the long term in long term memory. It shows everything that one can be thinking about at a given moment of time. It consists of three main components, and here they are. So this looks completely different to the working memory model, and that's okay. They shouldn't really look similar because this is a completely different theory. It's a different model. So you're going, perhaps you have to compare and contrast them in an essay or analyze them in an exam, but they shouldn't be confused. They are two completely different things. So uh, we're going to be going through the steps and each of the components in the working memory model one by one. And we'll begin by looking at the rectangular bo uh, box up top called essential executive. So the central executive controls the activity of working memory in the two other components. It manages what happens just like an office executive, so that's how you should really remember it. The other two components are like slaves to what the central executive really wants. Every time the central executive says a command, the other two um, then conduct it. And the other two components are called the phonological loop and the visuospatial sketch pad. So that's all you're going to have to know for the central executive, that it just controls what the two components in the system do. So first we'll look at the phonological loop, and this is a little more complex. However, it's nothing to be scratching your head over because we're just going to go through it now. So it's an auditory store that rehearses sound-based information to prevent decay. What this means is that all sort of auditory information is put into the phonological loop where it can be analyzed and rehearsed. So if you hear someone say something, it's then put into the phonological loop where it is uh, rehearsed and you can remember what they say um, for a long time because it's then being prevented from decaying. Now the phonological store is the first of the two subcomponents. As you can see on the diagram, there are two uh, sort of oval shaped uh, boxes and each one does a different job. The first one is the phonological store and this is otherwise known as the inner ear. And this deals with the perception of sounds and speech. Alternatively, there's the auditory loop, which is known as the inner mouth, and this is a verbal rehearsal system to prevent the decay of verbal material. So the phonological uh, store perceives the sound of speech, and the auditory loop then rehearses the um, verbal material, otherwise, you know, speech. So next up is the visuospatial sketchpad, and this is the final component. Uh, which is referred to as the inner eye. This deals with the information by visually organizing it. So it maintains the visual information in working memory. Now, you may be wondering how this works because this is just a kind of broad uh, explanation of it. Now, when you close your eyes and are trying to work something out, say a maths problem or trying to design something, uh, you kind of imagine a piece of mental rough paper, sort of a black or blank sheet and then you kind of just draw your ideas upon it. This is what the visual spatial sketch pad does. It allows your brain just to organize things by using your spatial awareness sort of inside your own head subconsciously. So that's pretty cool. That's why it's referred to as the inner eye because it allows you to see within your brain and it visually organizes all your information. So now we're going to be looking at the strengths of the working memory model. And the first one is uh, in facts about brain imaging studies. Now this is very interesting because it shows that specific parts of the brain light up when certain tasks are performed. As a result, this shows that um, sort of the brain is more of an active system that shows that the different parts of the brain are going to are actually going to light up and show that separate systems are at task. Um, for example, when we conduct a a um, hearing based uh, task the parts of the brain that are responsible for that are going to light up and other parts aren't going to be active. However, when we do something that regards the visual spatial sketch pad, other parts of the, of the brain, the more creative sides, are going to be at work and the other sides are not. So that shows that the components laid out in the working memory model do actually have um, some validity about them because they must be at work. Another one is studies on brain damaged patients. 
and these show that some perform better on spatial tasks, but not as well on tasks requiring visual imagery. So as a result, this also shows that separate systems are at work, as opposed to just one big long-term memory and one big short-term memory block, as in the multi-store memory model. Finally, as the model predicts, if we um, sort of multitask, our performance in each task will worsen. This is because we are dedicating ourselves to two tasks at the same time and we can't dedicate as much as our brain power and um, to both of the two tasks. So as a result, our performance will in fact worsen. Now for the weaknesses of the central, of the, sorry, the working memory model. The central executive has very little experimental support as you may have just wondered when looking at the central executive slide. Um, a lot of it is just presumptions and that's because uh, we don't really know that much about it. We don't know what can really be controlling the two subcomponents. It's just a hypothetical idea that something is um, controlling both of them because it hasn't been proven to exist yet. And also it's said to have limited capacity, but this has not been established since there is very little experimental support. So that's just something to think about. Also, there is no part in the model that shows how information is going to be communicated to and from long-term memory. And also it doesn't say how. So this way we have no idea what to distinguish is just the short-term memory, which is, has to be rehearsed and may potentially decay and what information we're going to be having for a lifetime. So this is kind of confused. There's no way we can decipher what information that we've just taken in is going to decay and what isn't. So that's one problem that it has. The final weakness is that there are differences in reading, writing, and spelling for different people. So this is basically linked to the fact that working memory model um, pretty much works. However, it doesn't explain why these differences occur. All it says is that some people may perform better because they have uh, a visual, you know, a better visual spatial sketch pad. But no one knows why some people may be more creative and be better visually than they may be with hearing sounds and remembering them. So that's another diff uh, another problem that the working memory model has. Anyway, we have reached some questions. What I would like you to do, as always, just hit the pause button, try and attempt these questions while hiding your notes. And um, once you have tried to answer them all, hit play and see if you've got them right. Okay, so here we are with the answers. If you did get all four of them correct, congratulations. I would advise you to move on to the next video. But if not, just go over your notes once more or rewind the video just to make sure that you have got everything on point so you can move on to the next video and go into your exam confident to get the grades that you really want to get. So we have reached the end of the lesson. Next lesson we will be looking at reconstructive memory and until then I will see you next time.